Look, the under 20 smartphone segment has been kind of meh, but this has spiced things up. This is a phone that everyone's talking about. This is all hyped up, but there's also this. Well, this is the new Lava Agni 2, and I know a lot of you guys are planning to buy this phone. So I'm going to keep things simple and I'm going to divide this video into four sections. The best, the good, the bad and finally the verdict. So let's start with what's best about this phone. So there are a couple of absolutely amazing things about this phone, especially when you consider the price tag. Number one is the design. I mean, when we first unboxed this phone, my first reaction was this does not look like a budget smartphone. I mean, the glass back is nice and premium, especially in this segment, although the camera module is a bit subjective and the frame is plastic. But when you look at it from the front, it definitely looks a high-end phone, no doubts. The curved screen, the very narrow and symmetrical bezels all around give this phone a very premium look. I mean, here's the front of the phone versus the Realme GT Neo 3T and the Lava phone looks more premium. Now, all of this would mean absolutely nothing if this phone did not have a great display, but it does. This has a big 6.7 inch, 120Hz, 10-bit AMOLED screen with good color coverage, 915 inch of peak brightness. And I've been using this display and there's absolutely nothing to complain about. This display looks gorgeous. The colors are great. It's bright enough to be used outdoors. It's very smooth thanks to the 120Hz refresh rate. So it's all good. It also has HDR support in some apps like YouTube, but there's no HDR in Netflix. Apart from that, what was surprising is that the haptics in this phone are very good. Generally, budget phones and mid-ranges don't get it right, but here, the haptics are actually good. The phone also comes with an in-display fingerprint scanner, which is rare in this price range, and it is fast and accurate. However, if you do get the phone, make sure to enable this option to get the scanner on AOD, because this is turned off by default and can be confusing. Another thing that took me by surprise in the Lava Agni 2 is the software experience. This comes with Android 13, and Lava has promised two OS updates and three years of quarterly security patches, which is nice. But what majorly surprised me is that there's no bloatware, absolutely nothing. I mean, this is a screen recording of the phone when I first set it up, and you can see that there's absolutely no bloatware, no Netflix, no Amazon, no Facebook. It's clean, it's squeaky clean. There's also no weird notifications, no glass lock screen. It's mostly stock Android, and this is great because there's practically no option left if you want a clean experience smartphone around 20K. Even motor phones have ads and Bloodware these days, so this is great. Now, I said it's almost stock Android because it has the stock Android look and feel, and there's features like wallpaper theming, themed icons, but there are some additional features like double tap to wake and lock the phone, edge lighting for the curved display, this background streaming option, this smart touch feature, and more. Now, all of this is good, but I also like that Lava has promised a free in-home phone replacement if there's hardware issues under the warranty coverage. Now, let's move on to things that aren't the absolute best in this phone, but for the price, they are good enough. Starting off with the performance, this is a phone that's powered by the new Dimensity 7050, and there's lots of RAM, lots of storage, which is nice. Now, if you're wondering, you're thinking Dimensity 7050 is brand new, but it's not. It's basically the Dimensity 1080 rebranded, and that's fine because the Agni 2 does well in benchmarks. I mean, it beats the Snapdragon 695 easily beating Android to a Geekbench, and it even comes fairly close to the 778G, so it's a good chipset in this price range, but the truth is, it's no match versus the Snapdragon 817, the GT Neo 3T, obviously, which if you don't know, is still in the same price range. Benchmarks apart, this is a phone that performs really well, there's no lag anywhere, apps open up quickly, and multitasking is good. Now, I did notice that Lava does cut down on animations in certain places to make the phone feel faster, but that does feel kind of strange. As for gaming, it was surprisingly good. Asphalt is super smooth, no stutters, gameplay is nice, and the touch response was good. We also tested New State on this, and I liked it, it supports 90 FPS on this, and the gameplay was, once again, very smooth, and there was no heating or anything. The point I'm trying to make here is that the Lava Agni 2 isn't the most powerful smartphone in this price range, but it performs fairly well in this price range. I also found the battery performance of this phone very good. I mean, you already know the specs and the 4700 mAh battery here gave us a screen on time of around six hours, which is very good. And the 66 watt charger that you get in the box is also very fast. It takes the phone to 50% in just 15 minutes, and I like that it's a USB-C to C PD charger. Apart from all this, the Lava Agni 2 has 13 5G bands, including all the Indian 5G bands, and there's also support for carrier aggregation, so pretty much everything's covered. Look, all of this is good, but one thing I was really concerned about in the Lava Agni 2 is the cameras. I mean, you already know the camera specs, and they're fine, but I was concerned because of two reasons. One, good cameras are hard to get right, just ask Moto. Second, the camera app here is just super outdated. It's kind of slow, it's kind of buggy, and I'll talk about that later on, but the camera experience has some good and some bad. The good is that this phone takes fairly good photos. I mean, just look at this photo we took in a park nearby and it has good details, colors are a bit boosted, but the dynamic range is good, especially when you consider overcast conditions. 
I also like this photo because it has captured a natural tone here and the shadows are managed well. In all, like, things aren't perfect as sometimes the colors look a bit off. There's also some noise, but other than that, the overall photos turn out fine. Now I say this because I compare the cameras of the Lava Agni 2 versus the Realme GT Neo 3T and the Moto G82 and after comparing all the photos, I think this is the ranking in terms of better cameras. So one is Realme GT Neo 3T, second is Lava Agni 2 and third is Moto G82. I mean what surprised me is that most of the time the Agni 2 takes better overall photos than the Moto G82 and most of the time it compares fairly well against the Realme phone. The GT Neo 3T is better overall, especially in low light and videos, but yeah, Agni 2 does fairly well. Now I said the cameras here are good and bad, well the good starts with the videos. This 4K video recording support, but in 4K there's no EIS support, so videos look like this in 4K. I know, looks like I'm shaking too much, but trust me, I was just walking. In 1080p, things are slightly better, the colors are fine, but the focusing is slow. In low light too, the video is a bit noisy and the overall quality is okay-ish at best. The ultra wide angle camera is also okay -ish. the photos are soft, the colors are kind of washed up. I mean, some photos are decent, especially considering the price, but yeah, I've seen better. Next up on the bad is the front camera, which takes decent selfies at times when there's good light all around, but most of the time it just smoothens up the face and the dynamic range is just bad if you have a light in the background. I mean, this is what it captures by default and if I use tap to focus on my face, this is what it captures. There's no balance shot. Now, apart from the cameras, what bugged me about this phone are the bugs. So there's a camera bug where it just does not let you take a photo or do anything else basically no matter how much you try and the only way to fix this is to turn off the AI option. There's another bug where the always on display just does not show up. The screen auto brightness is also a bit finicky. Sometimes it's too sudden to work and sometimes it just goes too high, too low suddenly. It's just a bit weird. Apart from this, the phone does not have stereo speakers. There's only a single speaker here in the bottom, which is loud and it's pretty good, but it can easily get covered up and muffled up. There's also no micro SD slot and there's also no headphone jack, but Lava does bundle a dongle in the box. So it's time for the verdict. The Lava Agni 2 costs rupees 21999, $19999 if you consider the discounts. And at this price, I mean, honestly, kudos to Lava for bringing in an exciting phone around 20K. I mean, this is actually a good phone, be it in terms of display, design, the performance, the photos it takes, the battery. Now I know there are a few things that Lava needs to work on that I mentioned but overall I actually like using this phone and it's only getting a challenge because this is a phone, the Realme GT Neo 3T, which is a 30K phone available for like 20K, 22K. And this obviously has the more powerful processor and better cameras. You know what? I just wish Lava keeps making good phones, replicating the same and offering good support and updates for their phones because I don't want Lava to become another Micromax. Here's hoping. <music>